Hey there everyone, today we are going to be talking about playing videos in Python with the Flat Framework. I will share with you how to play local or online videos, how to display subtitles and much more. I think that should be enough for a brief introduction. Let's dive directly into displaying the videos. So, I am on my PyCharm ID as usual and I came up with three files containing three examples to showcase the flat video control. Inside the first file, I simply import flat as FT. So for all those new to flat, we import flat as FT. FT here is the conventional alias, so popular in the community. We have a main function, which is the main entry point to the application. Inside this main function, I set the team mode of the application to light, so you can equally set it to dark or system. And as next, I set my window to be always on top. So even if I am working on my PyCharm ID, my window is always going to be over here. We're going to see that in a while. Next is the main part, which is the page.add video. So here you can see we are adding solely the video control. Inside the video control, you can specify several properties. The most important property is the playlist, which is simply a list of videos to be played. The playlist takes a list of video media. As you can see, we gave it a list of video media. And video media is a data class taking three parameters at the moment, resource, HTTP headers, and extras. Resource is simply the link or the path to a video file. HTTP headers is a, dic is a dictionary of string to string containing your HTTP headers. And extras is a dictionary of string to string containing any extra information. So the first video is a local video. It comes from my assets directory and the two others are external videos. So from links. The next property is the playlist mode. So here we are saying loop. Another value can be single. So loop simply means when you are done reading these three videos, start from the first one again and keep going, keep going, keep looping through these three videos. Single, which is another value of playlist mode, simply means when you are done reading these three videos, stop. Fill color. I set it to light blue, we are going to see that in a while. Aspect ratio, the volume, so the volume ranges from 0 to 100. So we have autoplay, which specifies whether your video should automatically start playing once the video control is loaded. Muted, if you want to mute the video. Show controls, I'm going to explain it once we launch the application. Expand equals to true simply means the video control should take all the available space. So in the next four, we are listening to events. In the first one, we are listening to error events, so once an error occurs, is going to get printed and here once the video control gets loaded it also gets printed once we enter full screen this is going to get printed once we exit full screen this is going to get printed so that's actually how simple it is the main property is the playlist where you define your videos from here you can define further properties like these guys so let me run this file and here is our video control i set auto play here to false so it doesn't automatically start playing the volume is 100 as you can see, the volume is 100 and we are not muted. Show controls. I have set show controls here to true. So it is true by default, but I wanted to have it here explicitly. Show controls is simply these controls you're seeing over here. So all these are called controls. So if you set show controls to false, you're not going to see these controls over here. We have expand equals to true for the video to take the whole space. We have the fill color, which is light blue. So this is the fill color over here. If you resize the window, you can see that it goes away. But once there is some extra space, it fills it with the fill color. So by default, on some video players, you see the fill color is black, but I wanted to have it here blue so you can actually see the difference. So you can see that we call the event video loaded, which is what we defined over here. If any error occurs, we are going to catch the event video error. If we enter full screen, you can see we've entered full screen. If we press here again, you can see exited full screen. You can do the same by double clicking and that's it. So here I'm going to start this video and it's going to play the first video in my playlist. You can move the slider, you can mute, you can reduce the volume, you can move to the second video. So this is the second video, this link over here. The automatic. Horizontal 11, Shelby GT500. I'm going to move to the third video, and here you are going to see the effect of playlist mode that loop. So we are here on the third video and it's going to automatically move to the first one. So let me move it forward. And you can see it starts all over with the first video. So that's the effect of playlist mode that loop. You can set it to single so that once it reaches the third video, it automatically stops the player. 
So that's how easy it is to play a video in Flat. You simply have your video control, which you add to the page, provide to it a playlist, and you're done. You have your video. Inside the second example, I still have my video player over here with one playlist item. So one video to play at the beginning. Additionally, I have a text field to take new video sources, which we are going to then add to this playlist. So here I'm handling an event, which is the onSubmit event, which gets fired when the user presses enter or when the user submits the input of the text field. When onSubmit gets fired, handle new source is going to get called. Inside handle new source, we are doing two things. The first one is to add a new video media to the playlist. So we started with one and once the user submits a new input, we are going to add a second one, a third one and so on. So here we are saying e.control.value for the resource. You saw that over here. We specify the resource as a link to a video, an mp4 file for instance. So here, once the user specifies, let's say a new link inside the text field, we need to get the value of the text field. That's what we are doing here. So e.control refers to the control through which the event was fired, which is in this case the text field. And here we are trying to get the value of the text field. As next, we are jumping to the last item of the playlist. So I'm using for it the jump to method, which takes a media index, which is an integer. And before we launch the application, I want to share with you a little tip. We have inflate this page that can launch URL, which you can use to check if a string can be launched as a URL. So if a string is a valid URL, if it returns true, then it is a valid URL. And if it returns false, then it is not a valid URL. So you can use it perhaps to check if e.control.value is a valid URL or not. But I wanted to make everything simple in this example. So I'm going to run this. As you can see, we have our initial media being loaded. So the initial playlist item we added over here, this is it. And we have the value inside our text field, which is this one. So you can see from here, we don't have any next or previous buttons or controls because we have just one item inside the playlist. Once we add this item, you're going to see the next and previous being shown. So I'm going to press enter to submit the value of this text field. It's going to get added to the playlist and we are going to jump to it immediately. So jump to it means we are not going to stay here. We are going to move immediately to the item which we've added. So let me press enter and you can see the video starts. And you can see the different controls over here. You can move back to the previous video and you can move to the next one. So we have two items in our playlist. You can move to this gist, which I found, which contains some other URLs. Let me just pick a random one. And I'm going to paste this inside my text field. I'm going to press enter and you can see the new media has been added. What's also awesome about this video control is that it supports streaming. So if you move to this IPTV repository, I'm going to link it in the description of this video. It contains a collection of publicly available IPTV channels from all over the world. So you can see the different playlists over here, group by category, by language, by country and so on. If you expand the group by category, you can see we have different playlists. So we have animation, it contains 66 channels. So we can pick up one of them, let's say entertainment, for instance, and test it in our application. Press enter. And this is it being loaded directly. You can see it is live as if you move, you can see that it's automatically being fed. It's moving, it's moving back because it is streaming. So you can move like this to so move to the next channel. You can move to the next channel once more. So you have kind of a little television over here. So here we have the third and last example, which showcases how to display subtitles in a video. To display subtitles, all you need is the subtitle configuration which is of type video subtitle configuration. So let's have a look. It takes a source, title, language, and so on. 
So over here, I specify my source, which is subtitles 1 SRT. It comes from here. So I have a subtitles file over here. I have the title of my subtitle and the language English. So you specify the language with two letter abbreviation. You can also specify a link over here to a subtitles file and it's also going to work. So let's run this. And you can see we have the text or the subtitles being shown over here. So one of the most important aspects of finance is interest. If you have a look at the subtitles from here, one of the most important aspects of finance is interest. So that's it. If you want to modify the style of these subtitles, all you have to do is add a text style property. So I have an example here where I modify the size of the text style to be 45, to be very big, the color to be red, the width to be bold, and the background of the text to be white. I'm going to close this. Let's rerun the application. And you can see this is the new text style being displayed. So exactly as we've defined. So red text color, bold, white background, and the size of 45. If you want to compare this, you can move to the 24th second in your subtitles file. 24th second is inside this range. And you can see it corresponds exactly to the text being displayed over here. So that's how you display subtitles in your video player. As I mentioned at the beginning, Plate is a cross-platform framework. So what we've done today, for instance, can be executed on mobile, desktop, or web platforms. To run this application immediately on the web, you simply have to add a parameter known as view and set it to ft.appview.webbrowser. Run this. And you can see a web page opens directly in your browser and you can play the video. If you are building an application that makes use of the video control, you need to specify it like this when running your build command. So if you are building an APK, for example, you say flat build APK and then you specify include packages flat video. If you are a Linux user, make sure you install libmpv as mentioned here in the documentation. Alright, that's it for today. So in the future flat releases, we are going to be adding more features to this video control. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any updates. If you faced any issues or have any questions, as usual, please drop them in the comments. This was the Etika Boy. Thanks for watching.